Does everyone do that? Like when they put you under, do you just let out a bunch of farts? Hey guys, it is day five after my surgery and I'm feeling really good and I put a little bit of makeup on because I wanna go out for lunch um, and like finally get out of the house. So what I wanna do in this video is just show you what I did to prepare before the surgery and then the day of surgery and explain what all happened in the hospital and then kinda of show you how I'm recovering after. The whole recovery process takes, I think it's like three months until I get the surgery on the other side of my hip and then it's a full year until I recover from both surgeries. So if you're interested in seeing the whole hospital experience in the first couple days after that, just keep watching. Hey, so it is the morning before my surgery and I'm super nervous. There's not real, I know there's not like a need to be nervous because it's just a routine surgery. It happens all the time. But anyway, I'm trying to prepare as much as I can today before the surgery. I'm also working today. I wish I would have just taken off. And also, I'm so, so, so lucky that I have a job where I can work from home. Um, not only because of quarantine and, and the Rona, but I don't know how you would do the surgery if you couldn't work from home because you can't walk for like a month afterwards. You can't drive for a month afterwards. So like you can't get to work. So you either need really good vacation time and benefits or to be able to work from home. Um, so I'm super thankful that I'm able to work from home and my company is really, you know, flexible about that. So here is one of the medical devices that they gave me and I just got fitted for it this morning. Um, but you put your foot there and your knee goes right there and it like bends your leg for you. I also prepped some things that I have to remember. So I want to bring, uh, I want to wear baggy sweatpants and these are really light because it's hot outside, but I want to cover my leg um, and also be baggy and then a baggy t-shirt and then someone told me that you need chapstick after surgery because you can't drink water after midnight and the surgery's at 10 o'clock so like I'm going to be really dehydrated and need chapstick and then also my water bottle I'm going to fill this up with cold water and just bring it the morning of so I can drink a bunch of water after surgery um, and then I also want to make sure to wash my bed sheets today so that they're nice and clean and then i'll also shower and wash my hair tonight because you can't shower for three days after your surgery so i'll shower and then like braid my hair or something and i have to take off my toenail polish because you need to do that for surgery okay it's the morning before my surgery and this is my mom hello she came down to help take me to the surgery and help for a couple days after, um, which I'm super, super grateful for because John has to keep working and I already bother him enough with doing things for me, so <laughs> it'll be good to have someone else to bother because I'll really need help. And I, it's, we have to get there at 8 a.m. and the surgery starts at 10 a.m. and they said it'd take about an hour and a half and then I'd be in recovery for three to four hours after that. So I think I'll get home around like three o'clock or something. I slept surprisingly well last night. Like my hip pain wasn't keeping me up at all and I wasn't nervous and I'm feeling pretty good this morning. So yeah, I'll probably be nervous right before I go under. So, 
are you feeling? Coherent. Coherent. <laughs> how are you feeling, Megan? It hurts. My physical therapist told me it wouldn't hurt at all the first day because they would put nerve blockers in there, but I don't, they must have forgotten to do that because it hurts. Is it like a dull pain that's always there? It's both like dull in my hips and like at the where they stabbed me. Oh my. Yeah. So I got there at 8. I was filling out all my paperwork and everything. And then they took me back around 8.30 or 9 o'clock to a private room with just me and my mom. And I was just answering the nurse's questions. And my doctor and his assistant came in for a little bit so I could ask them questions. And they could explain, you know, all my drugs and what I was supposed to do post-operation to recover. And I'm so glad my mom was there because I was not paying attention to anything. So she could really focus on asking questions and getting the instructions for after recovery. And then once I was back in that room, they put in the IV. That was the worst part. Um, and it wasn't even that bad because they got it on the first try. And then after that, I just kind of sat there. Before they wheeled me back into surgery, I was allowed to go to the bathroom one more time, which is good because I don't know if this is just me, but I'm like paranoid of peeing when I go under anesthesia. Like, or I'm sure everyone does this, but like, I'm also paranoid of just like farting a bunch once I go under. Does everyone do that? Like when they put you under, do you just let out a bunch of farts? Because when you go to sleep, that's something you do. You just start farting. But yeah, uh, as soon as she wheeled me back and after I went to the bathroom, they wheeled me back to the operating room. And the operating room looks kind of scary. It's like a room with an operating table and some leg stirrups and then a bunch of like satellite dish looking things pointing down at the operating table. Um, but you just scooch onto the operating table and she was putting a bunch of like monitor th things on my heart and chest. And then she put a breathing tube in my nose. And then I don't remember anything after that. I was out and then I woke up and I was in this big room. Um, and it was like a recovery room and a bunch of people were in there and there were curtains separating the different people, but it was a big room with people all along the, the walls of the room recovering and as soon as I woke up I could feel everything I could immediately feel like soreness in my hips and stab wounds from the incisions and I told the nurse I was in pain and she gave me something um, but it was still painful then it got better when I went home and started icing my leg a bunch and taking my pain meds but I was in the recovery room for about two hours and I was asleep that whole time and they woke me up after two hours and as soon as I woke up I was really cold and so they piled like a thousand blankets on me and I was shivering uncontrollably and then they wheeled me back into the private room where my mom was and I stayed there for about another hour before they fitted me with my crutches and sent me out of the hospital. So it is day two and I'm feeling surprisingly well. Um, I'm barely in any pain and I can move pretty well on my crutches and I can put a little bit of weight on my leg that they operated on. I was worried because both my physical therapist and my doctor said the first couple hours after I woke up would be the easiest um, and it would start getting painful day two and day three, but actually the first couple hours were the worst for me. Um, as soon as I woke up, I could feel everything. Like my hips were so sore and I felt like I had stab wounds in the side of it where they made the incisions. Um, and then after that, once I started icing my leg and I came home and started taking my pain medications and it got way better. So now I'm feeling really good and my dressing is actually waterproof. So my doctor said I could shower with it. So I showered just now um, and it felt really good. And yeah, I'm like feeling really good. I'm wide awake. My drugs aren't making me loopy or anything. Also, shout out to my anesthesiologist. I was not loopy at all when I woke up um, from my anesthesia. 
and I think it's because they let me sleep it out a little bit before waking me up. Um, I was in the recovery room for like two hours after my surgery and then they woke me up and I was like 100% coherent when they woke me up. I wasn't feeling loopy at all and I'm not in as much pain as I thought I would be. Watching other people's videos and like listening to my doctor and stuff, I thought I would be in way more pain. I'm just taking the pain medicine that I was prescribed. I was really scared of narcotics. I'm kind of freaked out about drugs like that, but the doctor said it was best if I just get ahead of the pain and, you know, take it the first two days. And that would help me be a lot more mobile and help the healing process speed up, which that seems to be the case. Um, and it's not making me loopy at all. Um, I feel wide awake. And then I have to use this CPM machine, which just moves my leg like up and down um, so that my joints don't get stiff. And I have to do this four hours a day um, just to keep my leg bending. <laughs> um, but it's bending at 40 degrees now and I just have to keep increasing that over the next couple weeks to be like 90 degrees. So this is me in my crutches. Um, and this is my dressing. Um, I get to take this off after three days, but it's waterproof, so I get to shower in it, which is nice. Um, but to walk in your crutches, you're supposed to put a little bit of weight on the operated leg, like 10% of your body weight to like get moving. And you're not supposed to just like hold your leg up and hobble because that hurts your hip flexor area. Um, but just like, moving around, putting a little bit of weight on it, and that's how you get better. It's been going really well. I'm a lot more independent than I thought I would be. Um, I can shower by myself and I can get around on my crutches really well, um, but I'm still frustrated and bored <laughs> with how limited I am. Um, because I can't really go up and down the stairs without someone helping me. And I'm just I'm just a very restless person in general. So I like to be moving around a lot and like all over the house and helping and doing projects. And right now I just have to sit in bed and do my leg machine um, that bends my knee like half the day. On Friday, day three after my surgery, I had a friend over that was really nice, but I think it was a little bit too soon for me to be on the couch and like having a conversation with people. And I, I love my friend, she's my best friend and I loved having someone there to talk to. So I was really excited about her being there and I wanted to stay up and talk to her, but I think I just didn't listen to my body enough and it got to be uncomfortable. And then yesterday I was able to take off my dressing after the surgery, um, but I was able to take that off and it wasn't like bloody at all. I'm a really queasy person, so I was worried I was gonna get really faint after taking it off, but it was fine. And I've been bending my leg like 70 degrees now. I have my machine that I still use. But yeah, in general, I feel like I've been healing really well. Um, I think I'm putting a little bit more weight on my foot when I walk in my crutches now. I can sit in chairs longer without feeling uncomfortable. So I think I might do some painting later today. Um, I've, I started this one painting like maybe a year ago and I'm just not the type of person to finish things. I always, I start a bunch of projects and then I never finish anything. So I'm gonna make it a goal to finish this painting <laughs> while I'm recovering. Um, and then I go back to work on Monday, so that'll be interesting because I still have to do this leg machine, um, like half the day, four to six hours a day, and work more than half the day. You're technically supposed to wait at least, like, one to two weeks before even going back to work from home, but I feel really good, so I'm hoping that the three days that I took off plus the weekend is going to be enough for me. But yeah, I feel really good in general. Um, I feel a lot better than I thought I would. All right, thanks for watching and please like this video and subscribe um, if you want to keep following my recovery process. I'll post new videos every so often um, just to show you how I'm progressing 
Alright, thanks. Bye.